Hey everybody, it's Poet WP again, and I'm going to share with you a poem, a spiritual, mystical poem that draws upon the great uh, principles of Buddhism, uh, which one of the great things about Buddhism is that you don't have to practice it as a religion, it's very much a philosophy. Uh, the principles within Buddhism are closely aligned with the principles that if you were to draw out like the principles of Jesus Christ, like highlighted in Jesus' principles, well, the principles of Buddha are very similar, only when you read the teachings of Buddha, it like breaks it down almost like a psychology manual would. Like it breaks it down like based on how the mind works. Um, the whole spiritual understanding of oneness, you know. Anyway, that's a whole topic for another video. But... This is Avalokiteshvara Bodhisattva of Compassion. Uh, this is a, an Alex Gray rendering of Avalokiteshvara. Uh, I'm a huge Alex Gray fan. Um, maybe I'll do a story time video later. I actually had the privilege of meeting Alex Gray uh, three different times. Uh, I went to one of his gallery openings and uh, also uh, when he, before he moved up to upstate New York. And uh, I went to one when he had it in the uh, west side of uptown man or mid mid uptown area manhattan kind of area uh when he had his gallery opening and uh i got a personal tour and before that he used to have the full moon gatherings uh uh and uh at his and his place in brooklyn and i, I lived in his, his neighborhood uh, when i lived in new york at that time and i used to go to his full moon gatherings from time to time which was excellent uh they used to have meditation guided meditation and he's a great great man alex gray he does some amazing art and it's just he does all the tool art and this is his rendering of Avalokiteshvara, Bodhisattva of Compassion. Um, yeah, I'll do another story time video about how I hung out with Alex Gray at his crib. Uh, it is one of his full, a couple times at his full moon gathering thing back in the day. That was really fun. I got to talk to him about all kinds of neat stuff about poetry and William Blake and stuff like that. It was cool. He's a great dude. Anyway, so Avalokiteshvara, Bodhisattva of Compassion. Uh, it is said that Avalokiteshvara holds all the keys of perception and <clears throat> he can liberate anybody or it it's like it's like bodhisattva is like a guardian angel and it's said that this bodhisattva can liberate any level of suffering it has the key to unlock that bondage of suffering for any type of suffering you may be going through and uh and it's the bodhisattva of compassion all the different eyes and the hands represent all the different levels of understanding and helping hands that will have to be given to people uh, in, in unique ways. Like everyone has their own eye representing their own level of perception and understanding. And the Bodhisattva has the key to the, each perception to breaking through the suffering. And that's what those hands and all those eyes represent. It represents a, uh, Each one represents like a, a key to someone's mind. In a way. And that's what it means to me anyway. There's a lot of interpretations of what that image of the Bodhisattva means. So, yeah, a little three, three and a half, half minute story there. Um, but, yeah, this poem is drawing upon the principles uh, of Buddhism. I will talk more in further videos about... <clears throat> I'm, a, I'm a mystically oriented dude. And uh, I draw upon Christianity as a... But I draw upon heavily the principles of Buddhism, and I study both. I also include in my practice all the parts of the uh, other Christian mystical study, like Gnostic Bible and the Dead Sea Scrolls. The Gospel of Thomas is amazing. There's a lot of stuff that got left out of the Bible. That uh, so, like that's my thing. It's my obsession. Kind of, I, I analyze and interpret spiritual things on a mystical path, and then my writing reflects that. And this is one of those pieces. Uh, this piece is called Liberating the Pain from Peace. <laughs> I have tasted death on more than one occasion, <clears throat> and I have witnessed death more times than I care to recollect. That final release, a mystifying horror to those who know the oxygenated states of the human brain. Death does not change so much as it transforms. For energy cannot cease to exist, and there is the 21 grams factor. 
But the weight of the soul is not something that can be measured by quantitative human means. As Buddha said, like a garland of endless flowers, fashion as many good deeds from your life as you possibly can. Nothing but compassion will save us. No one but you can do it. We all have to start our path with the same step. We cannot stand apart. We must live together. The truth is as plain as the nose on your face. And we all know it. And deep down, we all know we all know it. So stop trying to ice skate uphill. Consider the complexity of the statement from the boundless mantra, the identity of relative and absolute. Consider the statement. Do not judge by any standards. And then once you've considered that statement, <clears throat> allow an objective understanding or reality form within that concept of your personal reality. Then allow that point of view to temper the way the fire tempers a sword, your gut reaction. Cause the, le cause the least amount of suffering that you possibly can. This is the path to a state of grace and wisdom. It doesn't matter why you're causing suffering. God doesn't care why you do horrible things. When you do horrible things for righteous reasons, that doesn't matter at all to God. Okay? All that matters is your intention and what was resulted as the consequences of your actions. You should not be doing bad things for good reasons. You have to reach past all the physical conditions to attain the state of pure heaven. Few will have the will and bravery to delve so deep. It is not a state of mind. It is a state of consciousness. It is a state of being within all levels of consciousness. That is to say, it is the state in which all conscious beings intersect. Time catches up with all of us. What time did you reserve for understanding? Deliver yourself from the tide of samisara. Plunge through the waves of fear and desire. For you will not be doing so blindly but with the spearhead of God's love. Okay, that's the end of that poem. Um, and I ad-libbed a little bit here in, in the middle of it there, just to extenuate a point. And, um, and a little clearing up here. When I said, uh, in case some of you don't know the references, um, once again, like I said, this poem draws from uh, Buddhist teachings. And... Uh, <clears throat> when I said uh, the boundless mantra of identity and rel relative and absolute, that's a Buddhist mantra, uh, which maybe I'll share with later people. You people later, if uh, it's it's fascinating. It's like it's, it's very much like psychology. There's a lot of psychological science in Buddhism. Um, so yeah, maybe I'll share with you the the lyrics or not lyrics, <laughs> the words of identity and relative and absolute. Uh, but yeah, that is a Buddhist mantra. So, yeah, when I talked about that, in case you didn't know what that was. And also a reference when I said, deliver yourself from the tide of Samisara. Uh, Samisara, and once again drawing upon Buddhists, and uh, also, well, Samisara concept originated uh, within the Hindu religion, and, but as most things in the Buddhist uh, philosophy slash religion, I consider it more of a philosophy myself personally, uh, it, uh, it was, deriv was a derivative Buddhism, uh, uh, largely uh, of uh, Hinduism course but uh yeah samisara uh is is defined as wandering directionless aimless in an aimless state uh lost in shadow within the ways of the world within the cycle of rebirth so that basically samisara is where you the buddhists believe we get reborn many times as a human, and we're kind of perfecting our karma and our soul for nirvana, you know. And for most of our lives, we live in a state of samisara, which is wandering in darkness uh, in the ways of the world and not on a spiritual path. And uh, because of that, we get wrapped up in material things and uh, conditional things, things that are impermanent. And uh, we don't 
we don't have an, enough chance or we don't utilize our lives enough to uh, transcend our negative karma and improve our uh, soul's lot on the karmic will of destiny uh, so that you can, uh, you know, transcend negative karma and, uh, and uh, transcend uh, suffering and um, be liberated from, from bondage and uh, uh, move on to a higher spiritual plane and a higher state of consciousness. Um, a lot of times suffering can bring true liberation um, but you must uh, you must seek guidance during those times of suffering and uh, suffering can also bring about much uh, sorrow and sadness uh, they make you spread sorrow and sadness you don't want to experience suffering and then go spread it because you experienced it you have to turn inward and you have to look for guidance uh, I suggest Buddhism <laughs> just read it as a philosophy it saved my life, and it led me back to Jesus. I'll do another video on that later, how Buddhism led me back to Jesus. Um, yeah, we all have these difficult times in life. And when we do, we have to look for guidance in the proper places, not in the ways of the world, in the ways of heaven. Okay. Um, so yeah, the whole goal within Buddhism is to break out of the path of samsara, and to get on the path headed towards nirvana. The final, the final oneness with, with the Godhead. The universe, you know? That's the concept anyway. Anyway, I suppose I can ramble on all day about this. But I'll, I'll stop here and ramble on further in uh, later videos. <laughs> I'm, uh, unfortunately, I didn't prepare a lyric for this video. But, um... I'll uh, I'll make sure to get one next time. Uh, this is a poetry video anyway, so I don't generally always do the lyrics for that. Anyway, thanks for uh, tuning in there, gang, and uh, I surely do appreciate it. And uh, keep fighting the good fight, because you know what? We're gonna win. The old age of darkness is uh, is in its death throes right now. It's lashing out wildly trying to maintain their hold on their oppressive control of the world. Well, in this country especially. But the new age, the new age has dawned, and it's going to be a new age of transparency. It's going to be a new age of compassion. It's going to be a new age of awareness and empathy. And uh, we're not going to take this anymore. I'm as mad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore. <laughs> in the words of the great network, the guy from network, that'll, that'll take the place of my lyric. How about that? So yeah, we all got to stand up and, and become righteous in the ways of heaven and do what we know is right. It's not that complicated, people. Call your congressmen. Call your senators. Raise hell. Tell them we want Trump out. We want the children reunited. And we want the bastards who put him in cages prosecuted. Enough of this. Enough of this wannabe fascist. It's time to move on. Okay, I'll get off my soapbox now. I can just go on and on forever. All right, everybody. I, uh, I hope you're doing well. And uh, may the Bodhisattva of Compassion Avlokiteshvara enlighten your heart. Later. <laughs>